Welcome to Nico Props. I'm Chris Fry, also known as Nicodemus. So today we're going to be going through um, basically moulding with a polyurethane rubber rather than um, rather than standard polyurethane resin. So this should give us a nice flexible cast. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be casting um, some counters for a Garden Connect 4. The issue that I had with these counters was that uh, when I made them out of wood, the paint that I used, um, which I got from B&Q, unfortunately didn't set properly and it remained sticky and it kept sticking to the counters and they kept peeling apart and you'd have an issue with paint when you, if you wanted to use the Garden Connect 4 on top of, um, on top of a concrete surface. So when you let the counters go, of course they're going to chip. So there are some issues with the original design, so I'm going to remake them in a polyurethane rubber so that um, they shouldn't really stick together. And if they do stick together, they'll peel apart and, uh, and release properly. And then um, we should be able to use it on concrete because they'll just bounce and they're not going to chip or lose any colour or anything. So uh, let's dive in and I can show you using a two-part mould how we uh, cast polyurethane rubber. Okay, so um, for casting the polyurethane rubber, we're going to be using a silicon mold, two parts, um, and uh, the rubber that I'm actually using is uh, Polytech PT Flex 70. This is made by uh, MB Fiberglass. Uh, they're available online. Uh, I found them to be just as good as Smooth On, if not um, better in some senses. They're also more accessible than um, than Smooth R in the UK. So <clears throat> we take the uh, silicon mold, put the two pieces together, put it upright. Taking a couple of pieces of wood, cut to the same size as the the mold, like that. And then I'm going to use some elastic bands to hold it in place. I'm actually going to use quite a lot. I actually get these elastic bands off of the uh, the mailman when they. Uh, when they deliver mail, so I'll put the first one on at the top, the top there, just to hold it in place. Make sure that my wooden boards are in in alignment. So that's like that. And I'm doubling these up to give myself enough pressure along the mould. So I'm going to put the next one right down at the bottom, and then I just periodically put them down the mould, like so. I'll just rip my glove. Let's take that off. Put another glove on in a minute. In fact, I'm going to take both of these off because they're just getting in the way. Okay, so double these up. We want to make sure that they are along the edge of the mould. This is going to give us constant pressure and keep those the two sides of the mould pressed together. So you can see the kind of spacing that I've got all around the mould. Just give it a quick check and push those in place. Um, doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, that's going to keep that squeezed together. But it, uh, by having these boards, it's not going to deform the mould. Now this, fortunately, is quite a simple mould. It's just a counter. So um, for my uh, Connect 4, Garden Connect 4, and uh, what we need to do now is put that over to one side, put on the gloves again, and I'll get a new one from the box. Okay, so I'm putting on the latex gloves. I'm going to bring in the scales, because we need to do this by weight. I'm also going to be using um, a uh, polyurethane um, pigment. This is uh, Llewellyn Rylan, also by Fiberglass. I'm going to use, uh, I've got blue here, and I've also got uh, a green one of the same type as well. I think I'm going to cast the green, and I'll cast some blue ones, and I'll show you in a minute uh, what they're going to look like afterwards. So let's bring the scales in. So it's a good uh, good thing to do is to cover your scales in a, in a plastic bag. Thanks 
Frank Ipoluto for uh, that little tip. Keeps your scales good and then you can change the bag when it gets a bit dirty. So put a cup on. So these are 600 milliliter measuring cups. Just got them off of eBay. <clears throat> so I know that I have to have 120 grams at least to fill this pot. So I'm going to put by weight according to the instructions I'm going to put 50-50 of part A and I've also got a part B here as well. So I'm going to put the part A in first, 60 grams of that and I'm tipping the bottle sideways because I get more control rather than doing it front ways so you don't get the glubbing from the bottle. I've put 63 in there so let's take a little bit back. Perfect. No, no point in having any wastage. Reset the scales to zero and then I need... So this pigment is added up to 10%. Now I'll, if you put 10% in and you put 5% in a different batch there's not a lot of difference so I'm err on the side of caution and just you know I only do half there's no point in having too much so I'm going to put six grams of this in rather than the 12 that I actually need so or the maximum there's no point in having the maximum so put six in there we go six 6.5 but that should be fine reset my scales now you can use two cups for this if you want to um, what I'm going to do I'm going to mix in that pigment into the part A make sure that's completely mixed in so this is going to save me a bit of working time because the working time for this stuff is about three, three to four minutes pot life so you need to mix this up quite fast when the two parts part A and part B are mixed together and get it poured otherwise um, we're going to be in trouble it will set in the pot and that's no good to us so I'll leave that stick in there put that down on the scales reset because of the weight of the stick <clears throat> and then put in 60 grams of this directly into this one so you would probably if you're feeling a bit conscious about this and don't want to push yourself a time, mix it in, put them in separate cups and then combine them later. Just pouring this out, got to be very careful, keep watching the dial, keep the stream slow. gives me equal parts A and B. Let's take that out of the way. I'm going to want my mould in because I'm going to have to pour this quickly. So I'm going to give this a good mix, making sure to scrape the side of the pot as well and get rotating the, the pot as I can do it. Okay, make sure that's completely mixed in. I'm going to discard the stick and now we're going to go for the pour. So all we're going to do is create a nice stream, keep it nice and small so it fits into the hole in the mould that I've cut. I don't want to try not to splash the sides too much because it will gloop up and then it won't go into the mould and it will look like it's full but it's not actually full. nice steady stream not too quick not too slow if you go too quick it'll bubble up on this hole and as we get up to the top in a second I'm gonna give the mold a bit of a squeeze to try and a tap to try and get those air bubbles up to the top as if there are any air bubbles there we go so 
so we're at the top now. So, I'm going to give the, the mould a bit of tamp. Being that my mould is round, it's going to curve the bubble straight up to the top, hopefully. I'm going to give the mould a bit of a squeeze, so that any air bubbles come up to the top. A few air bubbles there. And then just pour the last bit. Just because I want the extra weight in the mould. I don't really need to put that little piece in there. You don't have to top it off to the top because of the. Uh, I'm going to be cutting that sprue off anyway. So um, <clears throat> that's all poured up, ready to go. So we now need to leave that for the recommended time, which on this is uh, demold time is two hours according to this. According to the website, it's an hour, um, an hour and a half to an hour apparently, but according to this tub, it's actually two hours. Uh, I'm gonna leave this for probably two hours and then demold. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna bring in a couple of casts that I did earlier. So this is a green one and I also did one in blue as well. So um, you can see that this is uh, flexible plastic but very uh, durable. Um, this should do fine, it means that I can drop these counters in to the game of Connect 4 that I've got, the garden game, but uh, it's not going to be a problem if it hits concrete or something like that, it's not going to get scratched, the paint's not going to get chipped off because there isn't any. So uh, so this should work really well. And that is uh, is casting polyurethane rubber using uh, two part silicon moulds. So we'll come back in a moment, uh, or in, a, in an hour or so, demould this uh, just to show you the final part and the, and the finishing off. Okay, so I didn't actually get around to demolding this when I cast this, so this is actually 24 hours later. So um, I've moved the camera and things like that since then because I had to go and do some filming for some other bits and pieces. Um, so I've come back to this today. So this is really well set, so it's had more than its uh, hours worth of demold time. We're going to take the elastic bands off. Take those off like that. and uh, move the bits of wood and it should just be a case of peeling it open like that and there is my rubber bit and I also have the sprue there so if I move my mould out of the way and take an X-Acto knife what I can do very carefully without cutting my own finger off is cut through that sprue in one piece and uh, take any knobbly bits off with the knife okay so that's that sprue removed I'll probably remove a little bit too much there I've got a little bit of an indent but that's uh, that's the casting. It's very flexible, as we can see, and uh, that is not going to get damaged in any way, shape, or form, hitting the ground or anything. So that can hit concrete or or anything. We've got very minimal flashing around the outside edge because the mould was held together very well. Um, and uh, and what is there? I'm not overly worried about. I'm not even going to bother cleaning it off. Uh, if I was that bothered, I could just kind of scrape the surface with the side of the knife and that would just get that off, but um, I'm not that bothered. So we'll leave that as it is, that's a, that's a brilliant casting. Uh, I just have to cast 21 for each side now. So um, obviously we've got the, the green there, and let me bring in one of the blue ones. There's one of the blue ones that I did previously. So we've got the blue and the green for each side, so that's good. So that was uh, casting using polythene, uh, polyurethane rubber. So um, we did uh, 
a green counter in rubber. You can see that this is uh, this is quite flexible. This is very easy to manoeuvre. I also did off camera some of the blue. So we've got the blue and the green counters, one for each side of the game. Both very uh, very malleable. Um, they're not going to damage or anything. And we use for that some. Um, some poly pigments. These are from Llewellyn Ryland made, but they are supplied by uh, MB Fiberglass in the uh, the UK. They're actually based in Ireland, but they do have somewhere in the UK for these as well. So, thank you for watching. To subscribe, uh, click the button up here. For the video on how the two-part mold was made, click down here. And um, I'm going to put some other videos over this side here as well for you to have a quick look out on casting and things. So, thanks again.